All right, hello guys, and welcome to your fourth episode of Winter Thoughts. And today we're going to be talking about the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation. I'm going to get into all that, teach you what it is and actually what effects it's going to have on this winter and actually what phase of this oscillation we're going to be in this winter. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask you to subscribe if you do like weather-related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, the first thing you need to know is that there's a permanent low pressure system located over Iceland and there's a permanent high pressure system located over uh, Azores, which is a chain of islands. And it's called the Icelandic low and the Azores high. And really what changes with these is the location fluctuates quite a bit and also the strength. And this is actually what our NAO is. The North Atlantic Oscillation is the location and strength of the Azores high and the Icelandic low. Now, in a negative phase, we're looking at a little graphic here. You can see there's more high pressure located over Iceland. This doesn't mean that there's actually high pressure, but there's less low pressure over Iceland. And what this leads to is the jet stream actually traveling over Iceland all the way into Greenland and then back down over Europe. And we actually have a much weaker high pressure system over the Azores Islands. What this leads to is slowing down of the jet stream. And actually last year we saw the opposite of this. We saw a very fast jet stream and it didn't allow for it to be very curvy at all. It didn't have any troughs or ridges very much. It was pretty flat for the most part. Now in a low, in a negative phase of NAO, we see much more fluctuation in the jet stream and it has a lot of these troughs and ridges. And that's what can really lead to big troughs in the east and big ridges out in the Atlantic. And this is when we get our, what we call Greenland blocking, which leads to storm systems being able to travel right up that jet stream over the east coast and travel almost directly north. And that's what gives us big east coast snowstorms. So in a negative NAO, we have much bigger chance for these big east coast snowstorms. Uh, now we're going to move on one frame here. And this is going to be showing what our positive phase of the NAO looks like. And you can see that uh, comparatively to normal, what we'd like to see for a positive NAO is anonymously low 500 millibar heights over Iceland. So basically lower pressure than what is normal. And then over Azores, we would like to see much higher heights than what is typically you know, expected for these areas. This would lead to a very fast zonal jet stream, which again is very flat, and that's what a lot of what we saw last winter. And this would lead to limited troughing in the eastern United States as well as Europe. Uh, so that would not be good for snowstorms along the east coast. If you enjoy a warm and almost snowstormless winter, then it's probably good news for you. Now, negative phase of the NAO, you can see is again the opposite. Relatively weak 500 millibar high pressure system over Azores and a relatively high pressure over where the low pressure system is usually located. And you can see that low pressure system moves uh, eastward over Europe. This is a very negative NAO look where we have a high pressure system where the low pressure system usually is. And we see that low pressure system move quite a bit east out of the way of that high. And that's what we'd call a blocking high. Again, that would lead to much better chance at east coast snowstorms and pretty good chance at big troughs in the eastern United States. The NAO for the eastern United States is one of the biggest oscillations. Also, before I move on to the next frame, I wanted to mention that I am going to be doing one of these for each oscillation, like PNA, AO, uh, maybe even the ENSO, and other sorts of oscillations like that. I might be doing an episode for all of these. I might have future NAO episodes in the future. I might make a ed more educational video just for the NAO, but this one is more as it relates to this winner. Now on these next graphics, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what we have going on. Is According to the CFS for our monthly forecast, we're going to be starting out in October here. And you can see that we do have that higher than normal anomalies there near Greenland, no near northern Canada. And this also correlates with the Arctic Oscillation. This looks like a very negative phase of the Arctic Oscillation, which again, we will talk about in a future video, which also leads to cold in the eastern United States. You can see that we do have our low our Iceland low is located a little bit, I, I would say it's a bit to the east of where it normally is located. And then our high there down by Azores, again, is lower anomalies than typical. So this is a pretty classic negative NAO look, I would say. And you could see those negative heights over the eastern United States. That's going to be colder than normal temperatures there for October. 
according to the CFS. And if you looked on the forecast map, you would see that that is the case. We do have ridging out there in the southwest. This is a pretty classic negative NAO look. Now we're going to move on to November. And you can see things are once again looking pretty, pretty cool here. We do have that Azores High located, I would say it's located west on this one. It's located, you know, much closer to Bermuda out there in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, our, our low, I'm having trouble finding the Iceland low at this point because there's mostly positive heights in there, but I just plopped it down uh, where I think it probably is located at that point. And then you can see we do have a high pressure system again in between Canada and Greenland, leading to a pretty big trough there for the eastern United States. I do not like the axis of this trough right now. There is... Um, you know, that is a little bit concerning to see the trough axis a little bit out to sea. Uh, but nevertheless, I think that this model does have some inaccuracies as always. So I'm not going to go and jump the gun yet or panic. But I would like to see the axis a little bit more over the United States. Uh, we do have ridging out there for the western United States, though. Uh, overall, this looks like a pretty good trough in the east, pretty good ridge in the west. And then really good blocking out there by Greenland. Now, we're going to look at December, and I drew down the axis here, so you can see my concern, kind of, but you can see that there is much, a lot, a lot of high pressure building out there near Greenland, Iceland, uh, Western Europe, uh, Northern Canada, all of these areas, really good blocking is building. I do see some negative heights building for the North Pole. That would lead to maybe positive AO look for, for December. We're going to have to see what it looks like when we get closer. But that is a little bit of a concern there so far. But we do have that high pressure building near Alaska. That's also a pretty good sign for the wintertime months. And you can see that we do have a trough in the eastern United States. The axis is a little bit not the way you want to see it, though. It's north of Maine, the axis, and it's pointing kind of eastward. So that's going to be interesting to see if we see that axis be a little bit more north to south or if it's going to kind of stay like that, which would be more cold and dry conditions with the axis looking like that. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and see what happens. Anyway, here's the temperature anomalies from October through December according to the CFS. And you can see, again, like I said, when we do have this negative NAO look, NAO look through a three-month period, we will see colder than normal anomalies expected in the eastern United States from New England down through the east coast, down into the southeast and up through the Great Lakes states, maybe even the central states. They're a little bit average with that, but we do see those warm ano warmer anomalies out there west in the four corner states, the northwest, the southwest. All of these areas look warmer than normal and then colder than normal in the eastern United States. Also, another thing you might want to eyeball is that there is much warmer than normal conditions expected up there for the uh, uh, polar regions of the world. So Northern Canada, some areas in Northern Alaska, green looks a little bit of below average, but overall we have a lot of warmer anomalies up there. Again, this is a pretty negative AO look, and that's another oscillation that would also lead to a lot of cold temperatures for the United States. But in this video, we just focused on the NAO. Again, I will have an AO video out in the future, PNA video, uh, all sorts of oscillations. You guys can also suggest ones if you'd like, uh, and I'd be happy to make those for you guys if you have any further questions. Uh, I do want to make more educational videos. I used to do these last fall, so if you guys do have anything you want to know about weather that is worth making a video about, you can leave that in the comment down below, and I would actually be happy to try and make those videos for you guys if I think that it would make a good video. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I did want to, again, talk about uh, the future videos that I'm going to be doing for Winter Thoughts and also educational videos as well. Uh, our Facebook group is doing really well right now. If you guys do want to go join that, it's a big community. We're well over 600 members now. We're trying to become the biggest Facebook group on Facebook for weather, obviously. Uh, so we are approaching 1,000 members. It's very active. So if you do enjoy talking about weather with other people, it is a great, great, great place to do that. Also, uh, with people concerned about Hurricane Dorian and how I haven't been making too many videos about that. Uh, my viewership and subscriber count seems to go down when I do make videos about Dorian or, you know, an excessive amount of videos about a certain storm. So I am going to try to limit those to a certain extent, but when I feel that it's needed, I will be making videos, obviously, for storms. But the Facebook page and the Instagram is a great place to get those updates for current storms and, you know, very frequent updates for things like that. On the Facebook page and the Instagram, I've been making 
you know, very, very frequent updates on things like that. And those are again in the link in the description and you can check both of those out if you would like to get more live updates for weather events. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day guys.